What is up, Giants fans? I'm recording this on a, a late on a Saturday night. It's basically early Sunday morning right now. It's been a rough day. The Nets blew a game, game four in the playoffs. Not happy about it. Aaron Judge has an oblique strain, most likely. So, not a good day for sports for me. But um, I'm excited that the draft's coming up soon. The draft's coming up in five days, I believe. So I'm very excited to get that out of the way. I mean, not get it out of the way, but just you know, I'm tired of the speculation and stuff. I actually want to see who we're gonna pick. Um, I asked you guys in a post about a week and a half ago, like any questions you want answered the next time I do a commentary. And luckily, like I think 15 or 16 of you uh, asked questions. So that's really cool. Shout out to you guys for that. So I'll be answering all those. I actually like, you know, looked into them and stuff and did the best I can to answer these. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Obviously our GM Dave Gutterman spoke on Thursday. He had some uh, interesting quotes. I wouldn't say most of them, you know, most of them were kind of just politically correct kind of quotes where you can't really say too much. You don't want to reveal your hand, which is understandable, but I'm going to try and look into those and kind of uh, interpret what he's trying to say with those quotes. I'll read off some of them. But uh, with all that being said, let's get into the video. All right, so I'm going to read his quotes straight off my Twitter, so they're probably not completely accurate. By the way, my Twitter is at Mike underscore NYY. Uh, if you want me, if you want to follow me, I tweet about the Giants a lot, obviously the Brooklyn Nets as well, sometimes about the Yankees, and just sports in general. So um, if you want me to follow you back, let me know. I'll do that for sure. Um, so let's look at some quotes here. He said, Eli is a pro's pro, and to get a QB in here to learn behind him would be sweet, but don't forget about Kyle, meaning Kyle Laletta. So Gettleman's not ruling out the possibility of Kyle Laletta next year. Kind of interesting. Um, hold on. Of course I'm doing this the wrong way. i got to do the whole thread here. Um, so someone asked about if there's any gold cha uh, gold jacket players at number six, and that was his big saying last year with Saquon Barkley is that he's a gold jacket player, which he's right. I mean, if Saquon continues to play this way, he'll definitely be in the Hall of Fame one day. So anyway, he said to that, you're riding on the edge. Uh, it's about value and who gives you the most value at that spot. So, I mean, he does think that some players could be uh, gold jacket players at six, depending on who falls. He's big on value, apparently, which... Um, if you're talking about value, I think trading for Josh Rosen makes a lot of sense, just my opinion. 37th overall pick for a guy taken in the top 10 last year, but hey, what do I know? Um, anyway, so about the 17th pick, he said, if we're at 17, um, I'd be very surprised if there's a player that I don't like. So he does believe that there's going to be a player at 17 that he does like. There's, there seems like there's a lot of guys he likes in this draft, and it's a pretty deep draft according to him as well. He said, you know, this is one of the deepest classes he's ever seen in terms of talent. Um, an interesting quote about playing quarterback in New York. So he said, the physical ability to play the game, being the quarterback um, of a team in this kind of market is a mental load, and you have to look at the backgrounds of these guys. It's more than looking at the physical talent and makeup, and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I personally have no idea what it's like to play quarterback in uh, New York, and I'm sure many of us don't either, but Eli Manning's handled it very well for the past you know, 17 years, whatever it's been, so... Um, the Giants want to find a guy who can, you know, really just handle this mentally, be the quarterback of this team. And there's, you know, as much as I criticize Eli at 38 years old, I think he's had a tremendous career here. I mean, if you look at the whole thing, there, there's, those are some big shoes to fill, honestly. So it's not going to be easy for the next guy to come in here and try to replace Eli Manning, a guy that all of us love for the most part. He talked about last year's record as well. He said we went 4-4 four and four in the second half, and we... Um, and if we get one defensive stop, we could have been 7-1. and one. So he does believe that maybe if they had a few more defensive players, they could have won a lot more games last year, which is true. That's definitely true. Um, he says every great defense needs a lead, lead dog. Uh, we just got to keep adding to that. Um, let's see. Strength off the middle is critical, but your lead dog can be any position. So he does say that strength off the middle, meaning like um, in the trenches, defensive tackle or linebackers, whatever, um, is critical, and that could definitely bode well for Ed Oliver or Devin White, those kind of guys. And I do believe that that's the tight that that's the top Giants picks right now on their board would be Devin White or Ed Oliver at number six as realistic options. If I had to guess right now, um, you know, Gettleman never really showed his hand this year like he did last year with Barkley, so it's kind of difficult to know exactly who he wants. But I think right now it it has to be Oliver and um, and Devin White if you dissect these quotes and, and try to just make a guess at who he wants um let's see uh sitting at 17 we're going to get a player we really like i'm going to said that already so he's he expects to get a good player at 17 um it's pretty much it i think um yeah i mean his quotes were kind of interesting it, it made me feel like they're gonna go defense more 
Um, maybe they're just doing a whole smoke screen and, and they want quarterback and they're just not saying it. So I really don't know. But it's going to be interesting what they do. I just hope it's not Daniel Jones number six. I mean, the Giants can pick to, uh, take a lot of people at number six, and I'll be fine with it. You know, there's some guys I'd be happier with more than others, obviously. But, um, you know, there's there's probably like ten guys the Giants can take at six, and I'll be cool with it, honestly. So this one's going to be hard to screw up, but as long as it's not Daniel Jones, I could live with it. So um, I'm excited, though. I mean, I really am. I still think um, the mock draft I did last time where it had Ed Oliver – and Jonah Williams, I still believe that that's the direction they would probably go if um, Jonah Williams fell to 17. I could see Oliver being a giant. I could see Devin White being a giant as well. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe they go cornerback. Maybe they uh, go Greedy Williams at 17. So, there's a lot of ways they can go about it, which is fun. So, um, as I said, I'm just tired of speculating. I just want to see this happen, and we'll get to see Thursday night, thank God. All right, so with that being said, let's get into these questions. And once again, thanks to those who ask me questions. Uh, so first, the amazing guy, well, not the amazing guy, just his amazing guy, asked, do you think we go Devin White and Daniel Jones, I hope not, in the first, and what happened to Chris Hogan and Mike Remmers? So recently I heard Mike Remmers had some kind of surgery recently that just came out like a few days ago, so I, I guess that's like upholding his uh, decision to go to a team. Maybe teams are staying away from him because of his injury. Um, but I do think him going to the Giants is still a possibility in the future. I really don't know. Um, if it's on like a minimum type deal, that'd be fine with me. Obviously, he's good for depth and can play every position on the offensive line. And then Chris Hogan talks. They died once Golden Tate became a Giant, and Chris Hogan eventually went to the Panthers, I think, last week or so. But I think the Hogan talks were more before we signed Golden Tate. So I think once we signed Tate, like the Hogan thing was off the table. Um, I mean, Devin White's going to be a top 10 pick, you would think, in all likelihood. I personally would not take Daniel Jones in the first round if I was a GM. I hope the Redskins take him, obviously. That, that would be awesome. But, um, you know, I, I would be fine with Devin White at number six, obviously. I think he has some things to work on, his technique, and, you know, he definitely tackles too high and stuff like that. His play recognition needs some work. But, you know, he's definitely like a new linebacker. I mean, I heard this guy was playing running back in high school, so it's not like he's been a linebacker his whole life. He still has stuff to learn. Obviously, he's still very young. So, I mean, there's a lot of raw potential with Devin White. And if the Giants think they can turn him into a star, then I'm all for it. So, I think he's uh, he's very talented. The Giants haven't taken a first-round linebacker since Carl Banks, I believe. So, I mean, that would be a, a big change. And uh, Devin White's the type of pick I'd be cool with. So, I'm fine with that. But hopefully, no Daniel Jones to answer that question. <laughs> the next question is... Um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Lem Lemuel Sinclair. I hope I got that right. Question was why are so why are people so impatient with Gettleman when Jerry Reese uh, Jerry Reese's terrible drafts over many years are the reasons we got into this mess? That is true. Jerry Reese did a pretty bad job with drafting. I'm I'm not going to deny that. Well, I would say to that, I mean, some of us are annoyed with Gettleman because, like, he's overrated based off what he did in Carolina. I mean, he gets a ton of credit for what he did for that 15-win Super Bowl appearance team. But, like, most of us fail to realize that the nucleus of that team was already established. I mean, you had guys like Cam Newton were there, uh, Keekley was there, Thomas Davis was there, Greg Olson was there, Josh Norman, who had a great year that year, was there, Ted Ginn was there, um... You know, he also got fired right before training camp, which is rare and pretty alarming, so that probably tells you something about Dave Gettleman. Um, his time on the Giants is questioned because he's made moves like cutting Romeo Aquara, who went on to have seven and a half sacks the next year. He cut Andrew Adams for Curtis Riley, which is a move I'll never understand. I mean, Andrew Adams is not a terrific safety, but he's definitely better than Curtis Riley. He let Devon Kennard walk, who had seven sacks for the Lions as well, I think. Um... The Alec Ogletree trade was kind of questionable um, based off the contract. I mean, I'm fine with giving up a fourth-round pick for him, but the contract kind of sucks. Um, and some of us personally will never agree with taking a running back second overall with a 37-year-old quarterback who's declining. So that's kind of why we have a problem with him. Um, and Gettleman, as a GM, you know, never picked a franchise quarterback, so it leaves us skeptical. He already had Cam when he was in Carolina. Eli was Ernie Acorsi, obviously. I mean, Gettleman was there, but it was mostly Ernie Acorsi and the Manning family forcing their way to the Giants. So I really don't know what kind of impact Gettleman had with that. And John Elway was already in Denver when Gettleman was there in, like, uh, the 80s or whatever it was. So I really don't know what kind of history Gettleman has with acquiring a quarterback or drafting a quarterback. So that's why it's concerning. And it's like, you know, personally, I'm concerned if he's, you know, the right guy to, to pick this quarterback. So... 
I can't judge yet, though. He hasn't done it, but we'll see who he takes at quarterback, um, whether it's this year or next year, but it's got to be soon, obviously. The next question is from uh, Karen or Karan, Karan Pete. Karam Preet Gill, um, thoughts on drafting either Devin Bush or Devin White. G-Men need linebacker help bad. I would say to that, I would take White at six, as I said before. Um, <clears throat> he has a, the ability to be a stud linebacker for the next decade or so. Um, as I said, his tackling techniques need some work, play recognition and stuff like that. But he could be a great linebacker, obviously. And when I watched Devin Bush, he really didn't impress me too much. Um, I'd have a hard time taking him. Number six overall, obviously, he does bring 4-4 four, four speed and, and good tackling, but, like, he lacks the size of a of most dominant linebackers and stuff like that. And, you know, when he's when he's blocked Devin White, when Devin Bush is blocked um, by a big offensive lineman, he kind of gets swallowed up and taken out of the play. So I personally have a hard time taking him at six. 17 I could live with. I think, you know, there's potential for Devin Bush to be a good player. So um, I'd be all right with that. But, you know, hopefully they do pick up someone – um, maybe they have some sleeper picks in the later rounds at linebacker, but as I said, I'd be fine with Devin White. I just, you know, I don't know about Devin Bush number six. Devin Bush number 17, though, I, I can live with. So um, I just think that Devin White is by far the best inside linebacker prospect in this draft, obviously. Next question from the Mike Tyson. Okay. Uh, do you think it's possible the Giants try to trade up at, to steal, to nine to steal a quarterback from Denver? That's an interesting thought, but. Um, you know, it's not impossible, but I just don't see it happening personally. I mean, if the Giants are serious about taking a quarterback, they'll most likely do it at six. I really don't understand the people that say, like, if they want a quarterback, they'll wait till 17. Like, that makes no sense. I mean, if you want, if you think you have a franchise quarterback who could be your quarterback for 10 to 15 years, you take the dude at six. I mean, in most likelihood, you have to trade up to get him, but if the Giants can get who they want at six, you take him at six. You don't play games like that. You just take the guy. Um... You know, it just doesn't make sense. You know, you take one guy and then you you trade up what would be three picks later, six to nine. That whole thing would not make sense to me. I mean, I do agree Denver probably does want a quarterback, and I think if we pass on Drew Locke, that Drew Locke will be a Bronco. That's at least what I did in my mock draft. So um, it's an interesting thought, obviously. I just don't think it makes sense to me. I would just take the guy at six. So that's that's what I would think would happen personally. All right, so here's some questions from a name that I'm not even going to try and pronounce, but I'm going to put the question in the video so you guys can try to pronounce that for yourselves. Uh, this person asks, I think we'll draft uh, Shermer's son. I doubt it, personally. Um, realistic chance we draft Haskins at six. Who will have a better record, the Doo Browns or our NYGs? Do you think Peppers will um, be truly and undeniably better than Collins, Eli, through 2020? All right, so um, I would get pretty annoyed if they took another mid-round quarterback, which would be the area that Kyle Shermer would be. But, like, in the event that he would go undrafted, then, like, sure, the Giants can take him and put him on their practice squad or, or give him a camp invite. That's totally fine. I'm just done personally with the whole middle-round quarterback stuff. It just hasn't worked the last two years, and it's just pointless. Um, there's absolutely a realistic chance for Haskins number six. Um... Nobody really knows what the Giants are thinking, but, you know, so for all we know, they could be in love with Haskins and can't wait to take him, but we really don't know. Um, I do believe that by the time their careers are over, that Peppers will be better than Landon Collins, but right now I think Landon Collins, based off what we saw in the last couple of years, is still the better player. Um, you know, he has more talent, he has more speed. Talking about Peppers, he has more talent, speed, ball skills than Collins does, but in my opinion... Um, you know, it just it's gonna take some time for for um for Peppers to surpass Collins and who's better. And in my opinion, and I said this last year and I was wrong, we will not see Eli in twenty twenty. I didn't think we were gonna see him after this year, but here we are again, another season of Eli Manning. Um, I don't think we'll see him in twenty twenty, but you know, in all likelihood, this is his final year in the NFL unless the Giants have some kind of magical season. You know, they make a playoff run and stuff like that. Even if they make the playoffs, I think, you know, Eli would be back for twenty twenty. But if the Giants have a year similar to what they've done the last two years, I think this is it. I think Eli might come to the realization that it's time to retire and that might be it. But knowing him, I really don't know. I mean, if he wants to keep playing, that's all him, but um, I do believe that if things go the way I expect them to go and the Giants have another six or seven win season, which I expect them to be this year, um, that's before the draft, obviously, then um, I do think this might be his last year. So 
seeing him through 2020, I mean, people people speculate it, but I just cannot see it happening realistically. But hey, I've been wrong about Eli before, so we'll see what happens in the future. So next question, this one's easier. So Kenzen Kong, that's an easy name to pronounce. Um, our record, if we hit it off uh, in the draft, considering our schedule is easy. Um, so I would say, like, if we have a perfect draft and the Giants get, like, Quinn and Williams, Josh Allen, um, or, like, a good right tackle, or and a good right tackle, I'm sorry, if they get, like, Quentin Williams or Josh Allen and a great right tackle at 17, then maybe this could be a 9 or 10 win team. I mean, right now I'd say they're more of a 7 and 9 type of team, but anything could happen in the NFL, obviously. I mean, teams change very much over the course of a year. Um, you know, in some areas, I'm a fan of the Giants roster. I think we have some nice wide receivers, tight ends, obviously, offensive line got a lot better, safeties, but I mean, they're still missing important pieces like the right tackle, pass rushers, and cornerback depth, and uh, a stud linebacker. They just need like a stud defensive player as well. I mean, Dave Gettleman talked about getting that dog on defense. We need that. We don't really have a star player on defense. I think Janoris Jenkins is a little past being a star. He was the first year he was here, but I, I don't really consider him a star on defense anymore. He's just a good player in my mind. Um, the whole schedule thing, I mean, I really, you know, I see so many people making, like, schedule predictions and stuff, and I honestly hate doing that. It's just so much can change. Um, the Giants played, like, four or five backup quarterbacks last year, and you know, if we were doing that over the summer, we would think that the starting quarterbacks were going to be there. So it's, it's like, such a week-by-week -week thing. I mean, it's it's hard to really go over the uh, schedule and, and you know, point out wins and losses at this point before the draft even happens. So I honestly didn't really look at the schedule. I mean, I kind of know what it is. I mean, I know we have the Cowboys week one, obviously. Then we get, like, the Bills week two. After that, I'm kind of fuzzy. Uh, maybe the Bucks after that. But um, after that, I'm kind of fuzzy on the whole thing. So, I mean, you know, we do have a good schedule, I think, and we really don't have to travel that much because we're playing the uh, AFC East team. So that's cool. But... Um, I, I gotta look more into it, honestly. I mean, I'll do a video in August about, you know, what I think the Giants will go, and I'll look at it at that point, but for now, I'm not really concerned about the little schedule thing. Uh, next question from Tristan Cass Cassio. That's it, yep. Um, what if we take the Buffalo quarterback in round five? So, unless you're talking about Josh Allen, I'm assuming you're talking about Tyree Jackson, the college quarterback from Buffalo. So once again, like I wouldn't be a fan of taking a mid-round quarterback for the third straight season. We did this with Davis Webb, we did this with Kyle Aletta, and then um, we're going to do it again with um, Tyree Jackson. I wouldn't really want that, honestly. I just want them, if they're going to take a quarterback, do it in the first round. Do it six overall, you know. Webb and Laletta look like a waste of a draft pick, and I, I, you know, I can't see them doing it again for the third time in a row. And honestly, Tyree Jackson is an interesting prospect, but he needs so much work. I mean, it's going to take two or three years um, of a project and a, and a really good um, quarterback coach to, um, you know, to make him into a star. I mean, it's possible, but I'm not really banking on it. He's an interesting guy. He's six seven, two fifty, has a cannon for an arm, but his mechanics are very bad from what I've seen. And uh, he's the type of guy that'll make like one great play and then make like a few bad plays and you kind of just have to live with it. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not really interested in having him, but if the Giants think they can turn Tyree Jackson into a star one day, then like maybe they take him in the third round or so. But I personally do not see it happening again with the, the middle round quarterback stuff. Next question from Ronald Martini. That's it. Martini. All right. Mar it looks like Martini. I don't know. Drew Lock question mark. Could he be the next heir apparent if we don't play if he didn't play and learn from Eli? I actually like the idea. I'm a big Drew Lock fan. If you guys follow me on Twitter, I actually just tweeted about him a couple hours ago. It's kinda of funny. Um, but I do have a funny feeling that Drew Lock is the one the Giants want. I personally vouch for Locke over Haskins because, you know, a lot of people call me a Haskins hater. I think there's a question actually coming up about that. But Drew Locke, I mean, he can do the things that Haskins just can't. Um, you know, you you can't teach athleticism and a big arm um, to Haskins, but you can teach things that Haskins excels in, like the accuracy, discipline, field vision um, to Drew Locke. So, I mean, you know, I think Locke is the perfect type of quarterback that you sit for a year and let him learn behind Eli. I don't think Locke is a, uh, a guy that can start right away. I do think he needs to learn. But um, Drew Locke, his personality seems like it's, it's pretty laid back, kind of like Eli Manning. Um, he's got like a witty personality kind of, so I like it. I think that'll work in New York, but um, I really don't know. I, I just have a funny feeling the Giants are just into Drew Locke. I really don't know. Um, some people speculate it's Drew Locke and Daniel Jones. I think Drew Locke is by far better than Daniel Jones. Um, but, you know, if you haven't watched Drew Locke play, I actually made a video about him about a month ago. Um, I'll probably put the link in the description or something like that. But he is... Um, 
man, when he's on, he's such a good quarterback, Drew Locke. It's it's very entertaining to watch him. He's the type of guy who doesn't really need much of an offensive line. He can make every throw on the run if he needed to. Um, his accuracy declines, and that's kind of an issue, but um, at least he can get out of the pocket and make plays. But I'm very interested in Drew Locke. I would not be, um, you know, I would be totally cool taking him at number six if uh, if that's what you're asking. All right, here's the Haskins question from Michael Scott. Love that show. Um, why do you hate Haskins so much? So, honestly, like, I'm sorry if I came off as a Haskins hater because, like, that isn't true. I mean, my problem with Haskins is that he was in a perfect situation um, for any quarterback. He had three NFL players on the offensive line. He had two NFL running backs. He had three NFL wide receivers on his team, a perfect offense. His offensive coordinator is great. A lot of people rave about him. And for Drew Locke, outside of Emmanuel Hall, he really had no one on his team, which makes it a uh, it's a t- it's a tough comparison to be honest. It really is a tough comparison to compare Drew Locke and Dwayne Haskins. But in my opinion, if those players switch roles, I highly doubt Haskins would even be known as much as he is right now. And if you put Drew Locke on Ohio State, then I think Drew Locke would be like a, a surefire number one pick. But um, anyway, if the Giants select Haskins at number six, I'd be totally fine with that. He's humble. He's a natural leader. He was a Giant fan growing up. He's accurate. Has a he's a good decision maker, and uh, he has really good pocket awareness. So I'm totally fine with with Dwayne Haskins. But if it were up to me, and if it was my preference, I would take Drew Locke because of the things I said before. You know, the things that Locke's good at, you can't teach, but the things that Haskins is good at, you can teach. So that's kind of why I like Drew Locke more. But um, no, if the Giants announce that Dwayne Haskins is their pick at number six, I will be very happy with it and I will buy into the pick completely. Don't hate the guy. I don't want to come off like that. I'm sorry if I did. Next question from one giant rebuttal. Uh, so it looks like possibly we take a right tackle, my guess, second or third round. I hope not third round. I want a second round or first round. Which tackles do you think will be there in those rounds? Which one do you like the best? So my tackle rankings would personally be Jawan Taylor, one, Jonah Williams, two, Andre Dillard, number three, Cody Ford, number four, Dalton Reisner or Risner, however you want to pronounce it, number five, and then Greg Little, number six, because I do think Greg Little has bust potential. I think these other guys are pretty safe. So at 17, I think, you know, I think most of them will be there except for Taylor and maybe Jonah Williams. I do, for some reason, I think Jonah Williams is going to the Falcons. I just feel like it's a lock. Um, I think the Falcons pick 15th and we have 17th, so I expect... Taylor and Williams to be gone. Some people have Andre Diller going pretty high, and I think in my personal mock draft, which I will post on Twitter in the next couple of days, um, I do have Diller going like 11th to the Bills or something. I have him going pretty high as well. So maybe it might be just Cody Ford and, and Reisner and Greg Little at that point. There's a few other guys they can pick from as well, but that's really those are really the six guys that I looked into a lot. Um, and at pick 37, it'll probably be between Reisner and Little. Um, I feel like all these other guys will be gone. I mean, Ford should be gone at 37. Dillard will be gone. Williams will be gone. Jawan Taylor will be gone. So at 37, um, maybe you see Cody Ford, but I think it'd be Reisner or Little. I'm totally fine with Reisner. I I think he's a good prospect. I'd be fine with him there. So, um, it's a good question. I actually am very curious to see what they do at right tackle. I feel like they need to address it. I hope they do. Because if they roll out Chad Wheeler at right tackle, then, like, what the hell was the point of this whole offseason? They, they did not correct one of the biggest needs. And Chad Wheeler's a good guy and all, but he just did not perform last year. So we can't have that. I just want a better right tackle, solidify that whole offensive line, give our guy some time. Because, as you know, if Eli Manning has time, he makes all the throws. I hope we all know this. So I do hope they make get that right tackle pick, and I hope it's a first or second round pick. All right, next question, and it's a long one from Nicholas Daniels. I hate reading, so I'm, I'm probably going to butcher this, but here we go. Given Gettleman's behavior recently, trades, comments, um, etc., I honestly can't say I'd be surprised if the Giants go best player available. I agree with that. Most likely O or D Lyman. My problem with this, as well as his other decisions this offseason, is that basically is it basically puts the team ceiling at eight or nine wins, um, which means they will um, have to give up a significant draft compensation. If they grab a franchise QB, say, next year, what do you think? I do agree with this. This is actually something that I've kind of thought about myself as well, that, like, if the Giants do win eight or nine games last year, they are completely screwed in my mind because if they don't take the quarterback this year, and let's say it's Eli Manning and Kyle Aletta and Alex Tanney on the roster, and the Giants win eight or nine games, don't make the playoffs, 
then you're stuck with like the 14th or 15th pick, maybe later, and you're not going to have your shot at the top quarterbacks, the Fromms, the Tuas, the uh, the Herberts, all those guys. You're not going to have a shot at them, obviously, because they're probably going to go top 10, top 5. The Giants would have to give up their farm, basically, to trade up and get one of those guys. So I really don't get you know, the whole thing. It just would not... Would not sit right with me if we won eight or nine games and didn't make the playoffs. I think that'd be the worst thing that could happen for this team. I mean, obviously it's it's good to win, but I mean if you look at this for the for the long term, which I like to do, um, that would not be good because you have to trade up a lot and give up a lot to get one of those three big uh, quarterbacks next year. So, um, but yeah, that's the whole thing. Gettleman is like I just don't like his philosophy on drafting a quarterback. He always wants good value, which doesn't really happen with quarterbacks. I mean, QB is a position that is reached on every year, and it's almost impossible to have good value in the first round for a QB. So if Gettleman believes Haskins or Locke um, can lead this franchise for 15 more years, then he must take one of them, honestly. He has to. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't. So, um, you know, I do think he'll, he'll definitely take the safest pick, which would be Ed Oliver or Devin White at that point because that's what Gettleman does. He's a big fan of the safest picks and best players on the board, which is fine. But that's the reason he took two running backs in the top ten the last uh, the last two drafts. I mean, he, he took Christian McCaffrey, I think, number seven overall, I think it was, for Carolina. And then follows it up number two overall with uh, Saquon Barkley, obviously. So if I were the GM, I'd obviously trade number 37 for Rosen, take two stud defensive players or um, take one stud defensive player and a, and a solid right tackle, and then you just go about your business and the Giants have their quarterback for the future, hopefully. So to me, it's a pretty easy decision. But then again, I don't know what Arizona is asking for. If the Giants can do it for the 37th overall pick, it seems like a no-brainer to me. But I really don't think the Giants are too into um, into Rosen. But I hope they are. I really hope we see that trade on draft night. I would go crazy, and I think that would be a great move for this franchise. Next question from Vey Lava. Who's the tackle and center eligible guard who best fits the Giants scheme to uh, to be day one starters? And do you see the Giants drafting a cornerback to complete to compete for a starting job? Job. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what you meant by the first part of that question, but like if you're asking for a versatile offensive lineman that could play both guard and um, and tackle, it would probably be Cody Ford. I feel that like he's more of a tweener, um, the the right tackle from Oklahoma. Um, so, you know, in my opinion, he has what it takes to be a right tackle, but I could easily see him being an effective guard, too. But we already have guards, so, I mean, I guess you meant center. Um, but, yeah, he could play he could play right tackle, in my opinion. Um, and, yes, I see them 100% um, going after a cornerback. I have no idea when. Um, you know, my personal favorites in this draft, um, you know, that aren't first-round picks would be Julian Love from Notre Dame, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who I talked about in my mock draft, Joan Williams from Vanderbilt and Kendall Sheffield from Ohio State, along with uh, Sheldrick Redwine, who I also had in my mock. Um, he's technically a safety, but he could play corner too, so whatever. I mean, I, I'll go with that as an answer. Next from Brushed Beast Would you be mad if we picked Jawan Taylor or an O lineman number six? I would be a little thrown off, but I wouldn't be mad about it. I like Jawan Taylor. I think he'll be fine. Um, I couldn't be mad at taking Jawan Taylor. I mean, if he's their right tackle for the next 10 to 15 years, then I that would you know that'd be an incredible pick. I can't really be mad at that. For me, it'd be hard to pass on like those defenders that you know are going to be there, like Ed Oliver or Devin White or if Quentin or Josh Allen fall. Um, but you know, if the Giants do have a great offensive line next year, if you think about it, an offensive line with Nate Solder. Will Hernandez, um, Jalapio, and Zeitler, and then you add Jawan Taylor. I mean, that's a pretty freaking good offensive line, and, and Gettleman pri- prides himself on having a good offensive line for his team. So if that's what he thinks, then I think we got to trust it because Gettleman does have a good history with offensive linemen, and if he thinks Jawan Taylor is going to be one of the best tackles for the next 10 to 15 years, then I'm buying in. I mean, I wouldn't be excited about it because who the hell's excited about taking a tackle? But if he's going to be an effective player, and as I said, around here for the next 10 to 15 years, then I can't be mad at it, honestly. Last question from Kashendra Ram Ramrup. Yeah. Um, what is more important, pass rush or O-line? So I would say this is a tricky question. But I feel like for the Giants, it would de- I would definitely say offensive line because when your quarterback is immobile, he's an immobile pocket passer, you kind of have to have a great offensive line. But in general, I would say defensive lines are more important because they can disrupt any game. Um, you know, If you lack the O-line, 
but you have an elusive quarterback or a mobile quarterback, you can somewhat get away with it and disguise it. We as Giant fans know especially um, you know, that, that defensive lines are very important. They want us two Super Bowls, basically. Um, but my top three positions in terms of importance in general would be one quarterback, two defensive line, and three offensive line. I mean, I think the coach and the scheme have to be into it as well. I think a coach and a scheme is very important, but... For the Giants, I would say that um, offensive line right now, which they have addressed and they have fixed because Eli Manning ain't running away from anybody, as we know. But I think in general, like if the Giants had, I'm trying to just throw a name, if the Giants had like Mitch Trubisky at quarterback, I think I'd rather have the better defensive line because it just it's a better recipe for success to have a great defensive line. We saw the Bears do it this year anyway. They had a great defensive line. Uh, I don't think the Bears have a great offensive line. So, I mean, I think they... They did pretty well for themselves, though, if uh, if that's what you're asking. So, um, but yeah, I would say quarterback, defensive line, offensive line, and that over for for my uh, personal um, importance to a team. So I think that's it for questions. If I skipped you, then that's that's totally on me. I, I was going down a list. I think five days after the the question was posted. So if you asked one recently, I probably missed it, and that's my fault for being lazy. But I think we got enough questions in here, honestly. So thank you guys once again for asking. It's pretty cool that I get to answer you guys' questions. I hope you enjoyed my answers. And if I said your name wrong, I'm sorry, but I have a difficult last name, and I deal with it all the time. So we'll go through it together. It's all good. Um, but anyway, I think this is going to be my last commentary before the draft. Um, if you guys really want me to do one more, then maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday night I could do something. But I have no idea what it would be on, so you guys have to give me some ideas. But anyway... Um yeah, that should be it. I hope we all enjoy who we take in the first round on Thursday. I'll probably have a reaction right after that. I hope it's a positive one. It should be a positive one because this is a pretty loaded class, especially in the first round. No Daniel Jones. That's what we're all praying for, I hope. And um, let's go Giants, man. That's all I got to say. I'm excited. I, I just want it to be Thursday already, basically. So uh, if you made it this far, though, thanks for watching. And um, you know, I'll talk to you guys either before the draft or after the first round on Thursday night.